When prices to the consumer go up in this country, it is as a result of factors completely beyond our control. We have not raised our tax stake on the sale of fuel in this country for the last two years or so. And there is no way, I, I need to make clear, that we can reduce our tax state. I believe Financial Secretary, correct me if I'm wrong, but for every 10 cents that we would pull back, we would lose two or three million dollars uh, from the budget. But when we said in the press release that was issued that we're working with the importers to try to moderate the impact as much as possible. That wasn't just glib or pious rhetoric. The facts can be seen in this chart obtained from the government's own records. In every instance except for kerosene, the government's tax hike matches or outpaces the actual landed cost of regular, diesel, and premium fuel. The pass-through ratio, the change in the domestic price divided by the change in the landed cost of the refined products, has hovered at or above one excluding the average 13% in commercial margins taken by the primary importers, Sol, Puma, and Uno. This means that the total cost, as well as the taxes, is passed on to Belizeans. The historical trend as seen in these charts is that even while government taxes were stable, Belizeans have always paid more than the landed cost of fuel, about 14%, going up to 25% with government taxes added. It has proven true even with the advent of Petrocaribe in 2006, as payments are made at concessionary rates, but ta the taxes are still added. So what does that mean for business? A recent survey suggests that 77% of businesses have named taxes, including fuel taxes, a greater concern, and that a majority expect prices to rise in the near future. On the international scene, a coming meeting on June 22nd of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries is predicted to see production output increased at the behest of Russia and Saudi Arabia to take advantage of issues in Iran and Venezuela. The latter has been Belize's primary supplier of fuel up to its recent issues with U.S. sanctions, though Prime Minister Barrow acknowledged that it will be hard to keep up the accord. Two things we've been working on. Number one, when the petro caribe arrangements were in place, there were certain margins that were agreed with Puma in shorthand by way of incentives to get them to source fuel from PDVSA because, of course, there were innumerable benefits redounding to Belize in consequence of using Petro Caribe and Belvesa as the source of our fuel supplies. We've stopped placing orders with Venezuela. I would not agree with anybody who would say that that means the Petro Caribe program is at an end. Aaron Humes reporting for News 5.